I wish you all a very happy Mother Earth Day, the 22nd of April. It gives us a moment to think about our mother, to think about our relationship with her, to think about that relationship has been abused by those who would create a war against the earth. And it's our work to create peace with the earth. The place where this violence against the earth is most prevalent is in systems that are supposed to give us the food that nourishes us. Today, agriculture has become like war because it has come from war. All the chemicals used in agriculture have their roots in military production and military research and a militarized mindset. But that militarized mindset is also a monoculture of the mind, blind to the abundance that the earth gives us, the diversity she blesses us with. Look at all the nutrition-rich foods that are available, that we have grown till the green revolution and industrial agriculture erased through the monoculture of the mind, both the biodiversity in our field and on our plates. So it is no wonder that today malnutrition and vitamin deficiency and mineral deficiency has become a major problem. The same people who created malnutrition and the deficiencies in vital elements that our body needs are today offering us genetic engineering as a cure through golden rice, a rice with some genes from daffodils to make it yellow as a solution to blindness and yet it is hundreds of percent less efficient than real foods that we could be growing in our gardens, in our backyards, on our terraces, on our farms. Like the sehjan, like the curry leaf, which also makes our food richer, tastier and our culture much more of a joyful experience. Pushing golden rice which has not worked over 20 years. It's not just a bad idea because it's so inefficient, but it's a bad idea because crazy means are being used. For example, the person who's been made the ambassador of golden rice said glyphosate is safe to drink. And when a journalist said, in which case will you drink this? He said, you think I'm stupid? Now an entire edifice is based on pretending that something is safe and yet knowing it's not safe. And that's the issue with pesticides and glyphosate, which we are now finding out through the World Health Organization is a potential carcinogen, validating what Dr. Seralini indicated in his research, which was retracted by a Monsanto editor. And now that editor has had to be removed. Another vindication of Dr. Seralini. Another nutritional idea, a crazy idea in biofortification is a GMO banana with iron for Indian women and vitamin A for Ugandan. Now why do they pick India and Uganda, one would wonder. We are not banana republics, but we are the growers, biggest growers and eaters of banana. Our varieties of banana, hundreds, yellow and red, large and small, and when I was traveling to Indonesia last year to offer solidarity to the farmers who had earlier been jailed for making their own seed and then they were released because the Constitutional Court said the farmers have a fundamental right to save and make their own seed. In this little village called Kediri in Java, they served me yellow and red bananas. I asked the activists of Indonesia, I said, look deeper into indigenous native bananas. Turns out that the GMO banana, financed by Bill Gates, is basically pirated for the vitamin A traits. It would be a much better idea to share the biodiversity of the earth than to allow monopolies to be created in order to destroy the diversity, destroy the seed and food sovereignty and our cultures. And then, to rush this 
insane idea, which is 7,000% less efficient in providing iron to Indian women or vitamin A to Ugandan women. They're trying to do human trials in Iowa State University. $900 to be paid to 12 students to eat a few bananas. This is not science. It is basically to rush the bananas on the third world to say, we've eaten it, now you should also. We don't want these GMO bananas or golden rice. Interestingly, when I was in Iowa State University to support the students, to give a talk for them, I found out that the lady, Wendy White, I think her name is, uh, who's doing the research, has actually worked for the corporations for their big biofortification program. So the nexus between university research and corporate interests has gone so intimate that we need to liberate knowledge, we need, need to liberate the seed, we need to liberate our soil. We need to liberate our farmers. The epidemic of farmer suicides that began in the cotton areas of India with seeds that cost 80,000% more, got the farmers into a debt trap and they started to commit suicide. That suicide epidemic, along with the distress, is spreading to other regions. One area where we've never seen suicides is Bengal, where Pepsi has entered with monopoly on potato cultivation, paying one to two percent of what it charges for a potato chips packet to the farmer, and in, in addition, making money from the farmer for the planting material, for the pesticides, the fertilizers. Just in the last few weeks, 16 potato farmers have committed suicide in Bengal. And then we have industrial agriculture contributing to climate change, as I've written in my book, Soil Not Oil, 40% of the climate instability problem comes from a toxic agriculture. That's where the greenhouse gases are being emitted in the highest amount. But it also makes agriculture more vulnerable. And at this point where our wheat is shining like gold and wheat is called kanak, which means gold in India, farmers have lost their crops because of untimely rain. More than 100 farmers have committed suicide. And I'll be working with them over the next few years to ensure that a resilient agriculture is put in place with seeds of freedom and organic farming. Our work in Navdanya and the work of scientists all over the world, the Rodale Institute, Fibel in Switzerland, the data is clear. By putting carbon into the soil, living carbon, we not only increase production of food, we increase the nutrition in our food 60%. We increase livelihoods of farmers. We increase the carbon in the soil, pull it out of the atmosphere where it does not belong in the quantities in which it's there. 10 gigatons can be pulled out every year with two tons additional living carbon in our soils through organic farming per hectare. And Drought is becoming such a big issue with climate change. For every 1% of organic matter in the soil, we add the potential of the soil to hold 80,000 liters per hectare. We turn the soil into the biggest carbon reservoir, the biggest water reservoir, the biggest reservoir of hope and prosperity by working with the earth, making peace with the earth. And each of you can be part of it. Each of you can make a commitment on this Earth Day to say, I will protect the soil, I will grow food, I will have a little pot in my windowsill or a little garden on my terrace or in my backyard or I will link to a farmer who is keeping the soil and I will say thank you to the soil and thank you to the farmer so that we have real food, living soil and living seeds and a future that we can imagine to be full of health, full of freedom, full of prosperity. The earth is inviting us for a grand resurgence. We will either listen to her or be pushed to extinction. And I know there are enough of you out there to not go blindly into the path of extinction. We have a future. Let's make it together with the earth.